Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Natalie. If you're new to my channel, I make nursing videos. And if you've seen one of my videos before, then welcome back. So today we're gonna to be talking about the best way to study for nursing school. And I know that a lot of people are wondering what's the best way to do well, to get A's, to you know just do really well in nursing school. So I'm gonna talk more about in this video for um, ways how to study best if you're a visual slash tactile learner. So if you are an auditory learner, this might not be the video for you. I personally don't learn that way. I don't understand how someone can be told something and totally know it a moment later. I don't work that way. So if you're an auditory learner, again, this might not be the video for you. You're more than welcome to go ahead and watch it, but it's going to be for more people that are visual and tactile learners. So before we even get started with how to study in nursing school, you have to understand that this all stems from the classroom. And you have to make sure that you have all the information that you need, everything organized before you even can start studying. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. So first things first, most of the time I'm assuming that nursing school teachers are going to teach using PowerPoints in a lecture. So the first thing you need to do obviously is download those PowerPoints. However, if you are given a PDF, which I've had some classes where they give you PDFs because um, they didn't want their PowerPoints kind of all out there, but there are websites where you can go and convert your PDF to a PowerPoint. So if you just type in PDF to PowerPoint, you can just kind of upload the PDF and it'll convert itself to a PowerPoint with the um, option to write notes underneath it. So don't worry if you get a PDF, just go ahead and convert it so that you can take all the notes as you want. So while you're in the classroom, please don't be texting, don't talk to your friends, don't do anything that would distract you because you really need all of your attention to be in the classroom because um, this is where you're gonna get all your information. So slide by slide, take notes, write as much as you can down because there are some um, sometimes where for me, I've had test questions where it came from what the instructor had said and not necessarily it was on the slide itself. So really take that moment and say, hey, just give me some space. I need to really pay attention. Get all the notes down as you can. And one thing that I wanna point out is that I know for some people, like for me, I'm just gonna speak for myself. When I was in the classroom, I didn't retain anything. I have no idea what was going on. I didn't understand it because I was really busy writing down the notes and that worked for me and I don't want you to get discouraged if you don't understand what's going on during lecture because if you're a visual and tactile learner you are really just trying to get all your notes as much as you can during that time because later on you're going to take your time sit down and actually understand what you had just you know, had lecture for. So don't get discouraged if you don't understand because that was my time to really dig in and get my notes in, make sure I can pretty much had everything written down that the teacher had said. So don't worry if you don't understand. So once you have all your notes, I know that some schools um, record the instructor's lecture. So if you have access to that, I highly recommend you take some time to re-listen to the lecture again, because this way you can stop and pause and take notes more thoroughly. You have time to kind of organize your notes. And this is the time where I organized my notes. So for example, when I started in the classroom, I took all the notes that I could. I'm sure, you know, I'm probably missed things here or there, but then when I was, I had access to um, recorded lectures that they gave to us through school. So I would go and take time, sit, re-listen to the lecture, not to really necessarily gain anything, but just to see that I had all the notes written down that I wanted to have. And while, if I had all the notes for that slide, I would take the time to go ahead and organize it so that you're not wasting out of, you know, time out of your day, because it's kind of be um, during the time that you're trying to make sure that you have all your notes together. So this whole preparation is just to get your notes in check and then now we're going to go ahead and talk about how to actually study in nursing school okay guys so this is the first thing that i wanted to talk about which is called a concept map now this was very helpful when you're in pharmacology because you have a lot of medications that you need to know you need to know mode of action their intervention side effects and obviously the names of the medications as well as the um you know the generic 
um, name and the brand name and then what it's for. So there's kind of a lot going on. So concept maps are very, very helpful to keep kind of everything on one page, keep it really visual so that you can actually learn what you're supposed to learn. So this is kind of an example that I used. So we're kind of gonna go over it. So for example, these are gonna be psychosis drugs. And then these are atypical antipsychotic agents, second generation. And you're gonna learn all of this when you're in school. But just to kind of show you how everything coincides with each other. So these are all the names of the um, different drugs that apply to atypical antipsychotic agents. So then you have the generic name as well as the brand name. And then you kind of go on to the intervention. What do they do? their mode of action or MOA, which basically in this case blocks serotonin with only one um, moderate uh, block of dopamine receptors and then whatever side effects they are. And then you can kind of put different miscellaneous topics that kind of have to do with these drugs that may not fit into one of these um, categories, but these are really, really helpful for um, pharmacology and I think it's I would totally recommend it. Just It keeps everything in one place instead of having a bunch of pages of information. You know this is all applying to atypical antipsychotic agents, which goes back to um, helping people who have psychosis. So kind of everything stays in one place. And I don't, I think this is kind of good for maybe if you do like the RAS system or different things here and there that a concept map would be really good for, especially if you are a visual learner. But I highly recommend to at least try doing Doing it if when you're inside um, sorry pharmacology because I think it's gonna be really helpful to you okay guys. so this is the second thing that I wanted to talk about so when you are a visual learner sometimes when someone says something to you or you read it it's very hard for you to visualize it until you actually can see it right in front of you so what I used to do especially like with health assessment or different classes where they had steps that is kind of hard for me to process without actually seeing it, I would kind of draw out different things to help me visualize it better. And I think it's very good that you know you Google something or you see whatever you need to see and then draw it, um, draw it out next to the slide that talks about it. So you can, again, keep everything within the same place and coincide one thing with another and that whole spiel. So just for example, I was talking about, well, they were talking about the branches of the, like the bronchi. So I drew like the primary bronchi, secondary bronchus, um, the bronchioles, and the alveoli. Sorry, alveoli, wow. And so you can kind of visually see how it goes through in the body, and then it's easier for you to determine, okay, if there's something going on with the bronchus or the alveoli, you kind of know where it is within the body instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I have no idea where it is, because you drew it out and you can visualize what has been being said. So that's something that's really good, or especially like some people have issues when they're talking about like the pleural cavity or the visceral pleural um, in the lungs. So again, they had talked about it over here, what the pleural was, the visceral, the parietal, so forth and I drew it out here to make more sense so for example these are the lungs you have the diaphragm the mediastinum the parietal pleura the chest wall is over here pleural cavity right here visceral pleura and you can kind of visualize it better that way and it's also nice to not only draw it out but to use different colors so that maybe when you're in your test you can associate like oh my gosh I remember that the pink part was the lungs or you know the blue part was a pleural cavity or whatever it may be and it really helps visual people to kind of pinpoint things in their head because when you're taking your test you can kind of in your mind go back to oh i remember that this slide at the bottom of the page when i had the pink and um, blue writings and colors that helped me visualize that so i think that's very important to keep that in mind and it's definitely a good tool to use while you're studying okay so this is another concept that i wanted to talk about so while you're studying like i said before it's super important before you even start studying to have all your notes in one place, have it organized, do everything, um, have everything be in one place. So you know that all the information that you need is in one place, that you can visually see it and all that. So let's say, assume that that's all done. While you're studying, I found it very helpful to, I'm sure most people do this, you know, go slide by slide, read what they have here, read their notes and so on and so forth. 
but was super helpful for me is that obviously when you read things, not everything's going to be so intuitive, not everything's going to make 110% sense, especially the first time you're reading it. So I noticed that sometimes when I would read over notes, I had a lot of trouble remembering certain things because they weren't so intuitive to me. So let's just say, for example, we're working with the same page. So let's say for plural space, it allows lungs to expand and deflate and smooth muscle. Now for some people, that might be very quick for them to remember and to understand, and for others it may not. So while you're studying, I think it's very helpful to have your notes and a plain notebook. And what you're gonna do with this notebook is you're gonna write down what you don't understand about seven times. And I know you're thinking, uh, I don't got time for that. But I promise you, once you are visually seeing it and you're you know, doing the tactile movement of actually writing it down, that it's really going to stick in your mind a lot better. So let's just say, for example, we don't understand the plural space. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it seven times. It's written down seven times and I can almost guarantee that you reading it, writing it will stick in your brain so much better so that when you keep going back to your notes, you know, oh my gosh, yes, I wrote that a million times. That should be stuck somewhere in my head. And I promise you, if someone asks you about it, you probably can regurgitate it, what you had written and seen because it's stuck in your brain somewhere. And I think it's a really good habit to have. So when you're studying, looking at your notes, if you understand what you're reading, there's really no need to do this. But I'm pretty sure that at certain points you're going to be stuck on the concept or it's just not gonna make sense in your head right away. And that's okay. But just taking the time to go ahead and write it down over and over and over and there's really no need to do any more than like five to seven times but I just found that for me seven times was a good amount of time um, a good amount of times for me to really have it stuck in my head so I think if you have your notebook with you as well as your notes you should be all set to go so not only do you need to make sure that your notes are prepared make sure you have everything you need to have um, and then also studying to me it was super important to have a really calm environment because I don't know about you, but personally, I could not study in the library because it is way too quiet. I usually just studied in my room, but I always wanted to make sure that it was really calm and serene and somewhere where I could really focus and pay attention. So I thought it was always important to light a candle because I just wanted some nice smells and it was very calming. And also it was super important for me to have my room clean because I just wanted, I just, I don't know, I feel like if my room's kind of like a mess, it's just really hard to organize um, your brain and actually study because you know that there's something going on. But once you kind of have your space the way you want it, the way that you really focus and um, do your work diligently, that's when I think that you're ready to go and go ahead and actually get to studying.
So to bring the whole thing together, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have all your notes that you need. Second, make sure that you are um, putting your notes in a way that you can study best, taking your time to do so. Make sure you have the environment appropriate for you. How do you want to study? And I think you guys will do really, really well. And also I wanted to say that for me, when I had tests to study for, I made sure to give myself four uninterrupted days of studying. So if there was any work like a paper or busy work, um, uh, stuff that you had to do, just try to get that out of the way for the week so that you had four, at least four uninterrupted days to study to really get yourself um, knowing the information. And if you guys have like, let's say you have um, four PowerPoints to do, what I would do is I would take the first two days, do two PowerPoints one day, do two PowerPoints the other day, and really get into it. Because if you try to study everything every single day, it's really not going to stick in your head very well. So I really recommend to split up your time to study for your different lectures and then kind of keep going on from there and then the last day should be kind of more of review where you can kind of go over the things that you just really want to touch up on or anything like that. So, and just always remember to take some moments for yourself, take breaks, don't go straight through, your mind's gonna go crazy, you know, take a moment to like go walk or watch a video or, you know, have a snack or whatever it is, but you give yourself some time so that you have that balance between studying and just some breaks and some me time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this really helped you. If you guys have any tips that you would like to share with everyone, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'm really trying to make nursing videos every single week. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. I hope you guys have a great day, night, afternoon, whatever it may be. Remember to always believe in yourself and remember to give yourself the amount of time to study. You got this, it's going to be okay. You guys have a good one. Blinded by the ones I lost Connecting lines of which we cross